OK, I'm back after a cup of coffee and ready to have a look at developer Mono. The first one is Godwit Roost. I think that this has worked quite well as um, a sort of graphic image depicting the Godwits on the seashore and the one breaking that pattern in the sky. When you have silhouettes like this, it is good if you can have some separation between the birds and in one or two places there is that separation where the light has caught the back of the bird and separated it from the uh, adjacent bird. I don't think that the arrangement has been 100% successful but I think it's been a really good exercise in making this sort of graphic photograph. The second photograph in this section is called On Reflection. I think this is really quite good at developer level I'm pretty sure this is the same model that we saw in the developer colour section. It works better in many respects in monochrome for me because it makes it much more artistic and the red colours are not distracting us at all. The light in the eyes is good, just showing that the way she was lit, that couple of studio lights, one above, one below. The face has picked up quite a bit of light. She's a good model, she's got a good expression on her face. For me the textures in her arms could be smoothed out just a little bit. I think they're unattractive in part but the expression and that reflection work very well. Possibly just darken down the reflection so that it doesn't compete so much with the actual face itself. Particularly the reflection has a very bright highlight in the eye and you could just tone that down a bit. But in this section I'm going to go for a second place with Godwit Roost and a first place with On Reflection. And we move straight on to the advanced mono section. There's some good work in this section and it's going to be difficult choosing the winners. The first one, um, I'm not going to try to pronounce this name but it looks like it's Scottish Gaelic and I love the the sky is, is so powerful in this. I love the way this has been treated. It gives that power of the landscape and the cottage there, a ruined cottage that we've got in the foreground just adds that focal point of interest into the picture. This is one I'm going to come back and look at a second time. Cleveland Union Chapel is my next image. I find this quite an interesting photograph and I want to really like it more than I did in the end. The picture itself with the picket fence, the Union Chapel signage and then the chapel itself and its surrounding trees and the flat plain, I think that tells a really interesting story and has a good sense of place. The graininess of the picture, particularly in those shadow areas, the halos formed around the trees and I think the clouds in the top part are a bit too dominant so in terms of the processing of that I wasn't as taken by it uh, as I was with some of the other pictures and so it hasn't made the final cut I'm afraid. The third photograph is danger zone, no access, all over the place, children keep out. I think this is one of those situations where the words are important. I've criticised or questioned the use of words in pictures where the figure in the picture should have been the more important. But here I think it is all about the signage. It is all about that desolate scene that we're seeing so much at the moment and the signs to keep out. So I think it's worked very well. You could have maybe toned down those bright spots in the sky a little bit. It is a bit grainy but not quite so bad as the previous one and I think this has worked quite well. Drinking in the view I'm not sure if it's the viewer of the scenery that's drinking in or the couple who are drinking in the view. Maybe a double entendre. And the restaurant itself is quite a quaint old building. I don't think it's a very strong competition image. It's again a good travel image. It works for me in perhaps a storytelling AV or group of pictures or a panel of pictures that's meant to depict a time and place. But as a standalone, I don't feel that it's quite as strong as some of the others in this section. However, it has been framed quite well and it has been 
processed with good detail in the shadows and in the highlights. So it does have lots of positive aspects to it. Dystopian future? Well, I very much hope not. I very much hope that COVID is not going to create this desolate landscape, this total degradation of our environment, um, but maybe it will. It's a stark reminder of what may come. Again, I think that the theme is very interesting. I'm not sure about the warning sign, which is very, very bright on that wall. When everything else is toned down, I'd have been inclined to just tone that down as well. I think we don't need it to tell us so very brightly that it's a warning. We can see the graffiti on the wall. I don't think that the processing has been totally successful. Possibly too much mid-tone contrast, too much grunge for my own taste, but a stark warning that's uh, otherwise worked very well. Uh, the farmyard geese photograph I thought was really very interesting. The processing for me worked very well and the geese stood out really well against that background. The compressed perspective has worked as has the side lighting. Possibly the goose that's partly hidden behind the central one would have been better not even there. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe I would clone that one out and I think then you've got the five geese, two pairs and a central one more dominant in the centre. But I think that that has worked very well. You've darkened down some of the highlights. Maybe a little bit more darkening on that gable end might help. But uh, that works very well for me. The Kelpie reflection in sepia. The Kelpies come up in lots of photographs and they're a very interesting subject matter. This is the, the one Kelpie on its own with its reflection in the pool. Again, for me, it's the processing that hasn't worked too well. I find it just a little bit too harsh and too much separation in the tones. And I think that, again, possibly the subject matter a bit too central in the picture space for my own taste. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Well, I very much hope there is. This is an attempt at a really simplified and graphic image. It's very noisy, very grainy, and the figure is simply lacking in detail, so just a silhouette there. I don't think the processing has entirely worked for me, but I do like the concept of this and the way that the figure has stood out within that framework of the tunnel. The lighthouse at Port Patrick, I thought the processing of this was, was pretty good. There are some very dark shadows just over on the left hand side and I wondered if there might be a little bit more detail just to be tweaked out of those. But the detail in the highlights is beautiful. The spray coming up against the dark sky and the lighthouse also works very well. The modern beach shelter it's, I'm not sure where this is. It could be absolutely anywhere, couldn't it? And it's one of those subjects that you could just very easily just walk past and not find interesting at all. But you've seen the beauty of the shapes in that, you've used the light and you've used the, sp the picture space well. And I think that's been quite successful. I'm not sure if it's going to make the final cut. I, I might just have another look at that and keep you in suspense and waiting for an answer. Morning Mist didn't entirely work for me. It is a very minimalist picture and I appreciate what you're trying to do with that. But for me, the minimalism in the top half of the picture, just with the boat and the hill in the mist was enough. And I didn't think that the second half, the bottom half of the image with its, I think it's a little bit of seaweed in the water. I didn't think that that was strong enough to add anything of interest into that picture. The museum roof study in sepia, I thought this worked really well as a sepia study of shape and form. And I was looking at the figure and thinking, is that a real figure? No, it's got to be a statue. But I think that adds just something into that. Um, the symmetry is good. The dome itself isn't totally symmetrical, I think, but um, I think it's good enough 
to uh, to make its statement and I thought the tonal range in this was very good and it had a lot of punch about it a lot of drama and uh, um, that I'm going to have a look at that one again the next photograph is perambulation and it's a photograph taken in the cloisters of a cathedral looking at the subject that you're drawing my attention to the woman with the pram she doesn't really stand out for me because on the left is a woman seated and then some couples and people down at the other end and I think you needed to be just a little bit more patient in order to have a figure that stood out within the environment and made a more satisfying competition image. On the left hand side we have quite a lot of highlights and I would probably think even with the number of figures that you have in here cropping off the figure on the left and the highlights might help it. It didn't quite work for me, I'm sorry about that. And Shapes at Salford Quays, a familiar viewpoint of the BBC and the bridge across the ship canal there and the ITV buildings I think on the left hand side in the background. It's clearly a very interesting evening with some beautiful patterns in the sky. For me the conversion to monochrome hasn't worked I think it has a number of problems. Firstly, it has halos around the buildings, which I see as being a processing fault. And secondly, I think that there's too much contrast in the sky, a little bit too much loss of highlights in the sky, and a little bit too much texture introduced into the processing of the image in general. So the viewpoint is good, the camera work originally was good, it's good and sharp and so on, but I think you need to revisit the processing of this to make something a little bit more satisfying. And the single Kelpie, Stormy, has very much the same appearance of the previous Kelpie, slightly different view of the, uh, the horse sculpture, but my comments are very much the same, that I don't think that the processing has done it a great deal of, uh, of justice and so this one hasn't made the final cut either, I'm sad to say. Slipping the tackle worked very well for me. I think that the three figures have been captured well. Great expression on the defender's face. The ball is there under his arm. The two attackers bringing him down and the whole of the composition works really well. The background has been muted down and uh, I think that although it's maybe just a little bit untidy here and there in the processing, there could be one or two little um, distractions still in the background could be toned down. It is nevertheless a really good image and will be in the final cut. As will Small Change. This one a social documentary style of photograph and I think that works really well. The figure coming towards us has seen the photographer and has got, I think, quite a challenging look on his face. He's totally ignoring the guy sitting in the doorstep who has his cup waiting for um, a few coppers to be dropped in there. Um, so it's a tale of two people who are not communicating with each other successfully in the environment, but of a photographer who has captured that. And the processing is very good. So I'm going to look at that again. And I'm also going to look at this one again, Spoon Beat. I thought this was a really creative piece of work. I don't think it's a montage, I think it's just set up. Um, the spoons reflecting the music on the bass and then the metronome just timed beautifully um, with the shutter speed to see that um, slight movement of the arm on the metronome. I thought that was really beautifully done and again I'd like to look at that again. Street art I think nearly makes the final cut. Possibly the reason it hasn't done again is coming down to the processing. I'm not finding the processing of the monochrome images quite as good on the whole as the processing of the colour section. Again I'm looking at the odd artefact around the edges where a little bit of work has been done. I don't think that the painting that's going to be done or copied is shown up quite well enough. He's not at the right stage in his piece of work to make it a very interesting photograph in my opinion, so I'm afraid it doesn't make the final cut. But the printer I will have a look again. 
Um, I'm not sure which of the museums it is, maybe Blist's Hill. The exposure of this is very good. You've got highlights and shadow detail. The machinery is in there and the printer posing for you with his um, advertisement that he's ready for printing. One or two little areas where you could improve by just maybe darkening down that top left hand corner and the posters that are in the background laid on the printing press. I think there's one or two little bits that you could improve there but I'm going to come back and have another look at that one. I'm going to award a commended to farmyard geese and also a commended to the printer. I'd like to award a highly commended to slipping the tackle and another highly commended to Museum Roof Study in Sepia. My third place is the Scottish Highland Landscape 4A01. Sorry, I can't pronounce that. The second place is Small Change. And the first place is Spoonbeat.